welcome to the channel today we will delve into the material science and understand a fundamental concept the stress strain curve so this graph you see on your screen is the stress strain curve but let's understand two terminologies first so stress simply is any force you apply on the body or if you go by the definition it is the force that arises per unit area within the material when external forces are applied it can be either tensile or compressive in nature and strain is the amount of deformation experienced by the body when this force is applied so basically it is the relative change in shape and depending on stress application it can either be tensile strain or compressive strain the purpose of this graph apart from defining the relation between stress and strain is to provide a graphical representation of strength and elasticity of a material it can be generated to investigate a material's behavior when any type of load is applied now let's understand the various regions and point on this curve so beginning with this point referred to as the proportional limit so as you may observe it lies at the end of the linear portion of the curve and this region obeys the hooke's law named after robert hooke who stated that the strain of the material is proportional to the applied stress within the elastic limit of the material and hence the name proportional limit in this linear region the ratio between stress and strain or the slope of the line gives us the proportionality constant known as young's modulus the next point is the elastic limit as the name suggests it is up to this point that the material will display elasticity just like an elastic rubber band which on removing pressure would snap back to its original shape the area of graph up till elastic limit represents the elastic region yield point is same as elastic limit except that this point is a precise calculated value where the material shows 0.2% of plastic strain or permanent deformation the material yields or gives into the pressure the elastic band no longer snaps back to its original shape rather distortion occurs so below elastic limit the material shows elastic behavior while above yield point the material shows plastic behavior and the area in between these two points is called the elastoplastic region the maximum stress a material can endure before failure is the ultimate stress point one of the stage in this curve after the yield point is the strain hardening region wherein increased amount of force is applied to produce plastic deformation since the material becomes stronger following the ultimate stress point a reduction in the cross section of the sample occurs which weakens the material till it can no longer withstand the stress and ultimately fractures this point is called the fracture point the area under the graph up till the yield point gives us a measure of resilience while the entire area under the graphs gives us the toughness of the material so this is the completed graph a comparison between stainless steel and nickel titanium would look something like this because of the increased stiffness of stainless steel as compared to the low stiffness and high spring back of nickel titanium and that was it for today's session